I want to do a current measurement on this device um, while it's running, just as a reference. When I'll use these LED chips, it seems to be switching off at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure why, because the photocell is blanked off here, so it should be good. Okay, I'm going to get access to these wires here Re and adjust the device. So I want to do a measurement. These are the wires going into the LED chips. So I want to do a voltage check. And I want to do a uh, current measurement check. I need to bear a bit of here. So I'm going to cut one of these. As I said before, I've got unplugged. So that should be all good. And uh, we'll do a measurement from here. Sometimes these things are a bit hard to get access to. At least I like it with these fittings, there's enough slack. Oh, that's for that one. Oh, there's double insulated wire, that's interesting. There's a white conductor in there too. Very thin wires. meter on the 20 amp range so I'm gonna put these two wires on here see what happens and the other wire where's that one is there and now I'm gonna energize the device and have a quick look what happens so we've got this is current test so the meter is on the, the 20 amp range Okay, so the thing is storing more than 300 milliampere, and then we'll see what happens. Oh, and let's have the meter here. Right here. So we're going to plug in and see what happens. Let's switch on. Oh, it is on. 0.4, so it's 400 milliampere DC. So these LEDs get run at 400 milliampere, it's quite a high current. Okay, this is better. The lamp stays on now because I had. Uh, green photo cell up uh, this one it's a switching photo cell so I put a blank dome in here now I had it sitting in the glove but obviously it gave me some false readings um, so I've this determined there's 400 milliampere going through these uh, LED chips now I'm gonna set the meter up for volts and do the voltage check and for uh, newbies and never say you've never blown up a voltmeter or M meter or whatever, I've done it a couple of times. So you finish, switch off, and put the wires back in the quick terminals. Always put it in the volt range. So that's the first thing I do. I haven't even I've unplugged the lamp. Put these two wires back in the volt range to avoid you blowing up your meter. Okay now volts DC and we'll see what happens now. As the LED chips run on 52, say so 53 volts DC, and I'll show you. The voltmeter is uh, connected across the red and the blue, while the current meter was put in series with the red cable only. So I've got some data to work on 40 volts, 52, oh sorry, data to work off that's 52 volts at uh, 400 milliampere. That gives me roughly about 20 watts, somewhere right there about. This is the Philips driver they got in these units, so that's all working fine. But um, I've got quite a few of these loose chi uh, chips. Probably check the chip out of this one too, but I've got some uh, uh, road kill lights from the skip. All complete and working, so yeah. That's the next step I'm going to do that. So I'll make a little capacitor circuit and I'm going to run it at a loss, a uh, lot less than uh, 400 milliampere. Again, most important step when you're middle muckering around with electricity, unplug safety first. Always get these uh, plugs re removed. So I put the uh, lamp back to operational condition. I put some standard Vagos in there. I don't like these because they break off quite easy. They are the newer Vagos, they're not as good as the, the old ones. So I uh, hear. Yeah. Let's, uh, I'll still keep that thing operational. I'm probably going to strip it, but uh, I've got more of these LED chips, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, i got the hush posh set up here. 
you get the lights a bit better. Let's first plug it in, see what happens, and then I'll give you better lighting and talk you through it. We watch the current. Um, we're back on DC. Plug in and see what happens. These work, that's the important part. The current is down to 100 milliampere in this setup. LEDs, um, it's not as bright as there, but I, on purposely I don't want them too bright. Probably can make it up to 200 milliampere. Um, let's have a look. The purpose I'll be using it, it's more than adequate. Um, you can run a higher current. The important part is you got the plug here. I got three capacitors of 68. Uh, 0.68 micro of uh, puff, so it's about two puff in series, 630 volts rated, uh, to the bridge rectifier that come from all TV. The important part is the series resistor, dropper resistor, that avoids the inrush current destroying the LEDs when um, the capacitors are fully discharged. Um, and also, I haven't done it yet, it should be in uh, 470k or 680 or so uh, discharge. So that's the AC side, positive, negative come out of the bridge rectifier from the TV, the red one I've done through the emitter here, comes out, black wire comes back here, goes to the LED chips, and the blue wire goes back to the common point on the rectifier. So 100 milliampere is, for this purpose I need 100, but these chips are designed for 400 milliampere. Put a milliampere range on 200 milliampere, and the exact count is 108.5 milliampere for the LED cluster. I like to set up for 100 ohms. You can put 68 ohms in there, or 82. Um, the way I look at the with this current side, we got I squared R. 0.1 times 0.1 is 0 0.01 times 100. 1 watt dissipation of heat, and I can still touch this, it's warm. If it's in its writing, that's a 5 volt resistor, so there shouldn't be any uh, issues there. Of course, all this stuff needs to be built in an uh, appropriate uh, enclosure. So this is just the value of the capacitor. And the bridge rectifier could be any generic, this is all an out TV set. Uh, but you can get a uh, one amp rectifier somewhere from an electrical wholesaler. So yeah, it's uh, post project works pretty well. I'm happy. So the voltage across the LED chip is 48.6 volts instead of 52 volts. So four volts less, a lot less current draw, less stress on everything. So I'm quite happy with that. 38 LEDs, so there will be two strings of uh, 19, 93, yeah, something like that. So this will be a series parallel cluster. To get rid of these lines from your camera, just put the camera on 50 or 100 hertz. You don't get these uh, in these uh, lines in between. You need to set it on the manual setting, so you get a stabilized picture on this camera. I'm going to implement it in the van for night light. Oh yeah, another important thing I forgot to say is when you run these at lower currents, you don't have to heat sink the bloody things. This is just cold. If you put 400 milliamps, this needs to go on a good heat sink. It's a big aluminium plate. So, um, yeah. If you run it as these currents, it's not a problem. It's just beautiful. Take two. Okay, I got it on the variac and I've got it, uh, I made up a little circuit board which is hanging here at the moment, I'll show you shortly, and it works fine, 697 uh, milliampere, so 100 milliampere more or less, 0.1 of an amp, and it works really well, and I'm happy with this light output, so I'll dim it down, so if you run it at 130 volts, it's down to about 44 milliampere, and with that, dim it down a bit more, and then it's almost off. So here, I botched a uh, circuit board together. Uh, 
3 times 0.68 micro, so it's about 2 micro F puffs. Uh, 100 ohm was this star in a uh, bridge rectifier. I put a smaller one up there. Watch it, this will get us. Not, not a perfect job, but it works. Uh, two yellow wires are AC in. And the red and the blue, they're going AC DC out 100 hertz, and it goes to the LED cluster. I'm going to fit that uh, tomorrow, and then um, I'll give a test run, and I'll show you how it works.